All right, welcome to another Hickory Hack. Today I'm showing you how I turn a modern low compression Wilson Staff golf ball into two different replica antique balls. Uh, first, a mesh pattern ball, and then a ball that I use for gutty play. There's a lot of trial and error that went into this process, so here's some of the first attempts, uh, and the Wilson Staff balls ended up being the best. So let's start with the replica mesh pattern. Out of all my trials, I've found that the Wilson Staff Zip uh, is the best for the mesh pattern. Um, not only is it a good ball for hickory play, uh, but it also has a soft enough cover that it melts well and takes the uh, mold pattern. Uh, so what I'm doing here first is using a 240 grit sanding drum and uh, just shaving off a little bit of the surface to get rid of the logos so that I have a totally clean ball for the pattern. And uh, then I use a Dremel buffing pad to go over the sanding spots just to make sure I don't have any rough areas. Uh, and then I'm going to pop these in the freezer uh, and I'll leave them in there for up to a day. The goal here is to shrink the ball enough so that it fits into the antique mold uh, without any gap between the two pieces. So when this works right, you've got both pieces neatly sealed to each other and then I, I use a clamp to make sure that they're tight so that when I put them in the toaster oven, uh, the ball will heat up and expand, but it'll expand into the pattern and give me a nice clean pattern all the way around. So as soon as this comes out, um, I'm going to put some leather gloves on because it's going to be hot. And uh, you'll see here that uh, if you've done this right, you won't have much of a bleed through the pattern uh, molds that you'll have to remove later. Uh, you know, basically this is kind of a, a ring that you're gonna get around the ball. Uh, you can see that a little bit there, but it's when I take this out of the mold, you're gonna see it's not that much. But I'm gonna take that out of the clamp and then just let it sit in the mold for several hours to cool down before I try to take it out. So when the ball's cool, it'll come out really easy, but you'll have this little ring that you'll have to take care of. So again, I'm using the 240 grit sanding drum and very carefully going around the ball making sure that I don't nick it. I apologize for the glare here. I wish you could see the detail. Uh, but then I'll go around the ring and buff it and you can see in the inset photo that you can hardly tell there was a ring there at all if you've done that right. And then this ball is pretty much done and ready to play. So now we'll move on to the ball that I used for pre-1900 gutty golf. Uh, this one was inspired by an 1860s Allen Robertson hand hammered ball made out of gutta percha. Uh, and I'm using a Wilson Staff Duo Soft for this process. It's 29 compression, which is ideal for gutty golf. So the baking process is the same as the mesh pattern ball, but there's no mold. So I use a muffin tin turned over as a cradle. And then just like the mesh pattern, I bake it at 375 for 12 minutes. And it'll come out um, pretty hot, so I use the leather gloves here. But the dimples will have disappeared, and it'll just be a smooth plastic that's pliable. So trying to work as fast as possible, I'm going to carve lines into the ball all the way around, and then I'll go back around again and make those lines a little deeper. Uh, if the ball is cooled too much, I'll pop it back in the oven for about four minutes just to get it soft, but not to make everything that I've already done disappear, and just keep working my way around it, making these lines. So the idea behind this is in the mid-1800s, they figured out that a totally smooth golf ball was just too erratic, but when it got cut during play, it became more aerodynamic. So they started purposefully adding these hand hammered lines to the, the gutta percha ball, which made these balls more aerodynamic, but even then uh, a well-struck ball could fly erratically and you never quite knew where these balls were gonna end up, kind of like a knuckleball. Uh, so I wish you could see the detail as I work here, but there's the finished product. Not quite as clean looking as the Allen Robertson, but um, I'm getting closer every time I do this. And the ball flight is exactly what I was hoping to get out of it. So that's my crude method for making DIY antique balls. If you want the real deal, check out McIntyre Golf and their full line of great replicas. And if you want really nice looking hand hammered balls made out of synthetic gutta percha, check out what Gavin's doing at Time Warp Golf in the UK. That'll wrap up this Hickory Hack. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please like and make sure you subscribe.